We're living in a day and time where being politically correct is popular. Can we turn that around again? We're living in a day and time where everybody's saying the name of God, but nobody wants to say the name of Jesus. We don't want to offend the Muslims. We don't want to offend the Jews. We don't want to offend the Arabs. And so therefore we crucify him of flesh. But I want you to know that there will come a time when every Muslim, when every Buddhist, when every Jew, will have to get down on their knees and have to confess that at the name of Jesus, every knee shall bow. So I want every blood wash believer to not wait until then. And if you've ever gone through something, you know right here that there's something about the name. Something else. Something about the name Jesus. Something about the name. Let's get ready to worship.
Good morning and welcome to the church of EPFM. That's right, East Point First Malibu, United Methodist Church. Do you feel like praising God today? I don't know about you, but I really do. God has been so, so good to me. This is a wonderful day to be in the house of the Lord. And wherever you are, you are in the house of the Lord because God is with you. Come on, God. Somebody give God some praise in this house. What a wonderful day to be happy in the house of the Lord. Wow. I tell you. Those good old songs, they always get to me because it makes me remember the good old days in the church when we'd be singing and dancing all night long. Well, I just want to welcome you to the Church of EPFM. I am Michael Stinson, and I'm glad to serve as the pastor of this wonderful church. We had a little technical difficulties early, and we hope we worked them all out, but we thank you for being with us virtually. Uh, as you know, we will be uh, worshiping virtually for quite a while now because in Georgia, it's still going up. The virus is still going up. The curve is not coming down. Until it comes down, we cannot come back into a box, which could be a death box for some. So we thank you for worshiping with us virtually. I know we'll have some people here from California, people from Mississippi are in the house. We have people from Detroit, from Chicago. We have people from Washington, D.C., Maryland, and Florida. And New York is in the house, too. North Carolina is in the house. So we want to thank you all for coming and worshiping with us today. And we ask that you push that little share button so that other people can get some of this too. We want to make sure that we allow everybody to have a good word from God today. Uh, as you know, we are, we've been having special Sundays throughout the month of July, and today is School Spirit Sunday. And so you see, I got on my Howard shirt, that's HU, the real HU, Howard University, you know. And also, I didn't have a shirt for my gammon uh, in, uh, in the presentation earlier, so I got my gammon cup, I'm drinking my water out of that. And while I was up at Howard, I did run into a few nice men from uh, that like the colors black and gold. So uh, I hope that you have on your school spirit stuff as well. We just want to thank, uh, thank you for worshiping with us and all we do. You know, we had a really busy week at the church. On Tuesday and Thursday, we gave away food boxes, about 7,000 pounds of food. And then on top of that, on Thursday, Fulton Fresh Market came by and they gave away some more food. And we also had a blood drive on Thursday. And then on Friday, we came back with COVID testing. We want to thank everybody, all our volunteers, especially we want to thank our trustees because they work really hard to make sure that the church is open and available for services such as this. This week, we still will have the food distributions on Tuesdays and Thursdays, and we will have COVID testing again this Friday from 10 a.m. to 4 p.m. From 10 a.m. to 4 p.m. Friday, we will have COVID testing. Uh, we have uh, started a new prayer call line, 7 o'clock Monday morning, 7 o'clock Monday morning. Uh, and if you saw the previews, you saw the number for that. Uh, if you need the number, you can call uh, the church office and we'll be sure to get you that information. But that's going to be 7 o'clock every Monday morning. Just we'll see how that picks up. We do have a prayer email where you can send your prayers to the church. And it's at prayer at epfmumc.org. That's prayer at epfmumc.org. We want to especially lift up uh, our sister Judy Wilcox. She lost her son, Juan, yesterday, and we want to keep them lifted in prayer. Uh, we also want to uh, lift up uh, the Few family. Uh, Larry Few lost, his, uh, lost one of his aunts. I understand she was 100 years old, and her service was yesterday. Uh, last thing, we I want to give you the opportunity to participate in our ministry with us. Uh, you can do that in five different ways. You can go online at epfmumc.org. That's epfmumc.org, and there's a give button that you can press there. You can give through the Give Plus app on your phone. You can also give by texting the amount that you want to give to 404-567-5052. That's 404-567-5052. You can mail a check to the church at 2651 Church Street. That's 2651. Five one Church Street, East Point, Georgia, 30344, or you can drive by the church and put it in the mail slot. You can even put cash in the mail slot because it goes into a locked box. So 
We thank you for participating with us in that. As a matter of fact, let's give God some thanks for his blessings. Oh, Lord our God, we give not because we have to. We give because you have been good in giving to us. And Lord, we cannot beat you because every good gift comes from above. So thank you, oh Lord, for blessing us with, with health, with wealth, and with so much other things, oh Lord. So we just want to come to you right now just to say thank you by participating, by giving you a sacrificial offering to let you know that we just love you and that we appreciate that you're doing and we are not taking you for granted. So, Lord, we ask that you bless the givers. Bless those who are un un unable to give at this time, oh, Lord. We ask that you give them a special blessing that next week they will be able to give something. So, Lord, we ask that you bless these gifts. May they multiply 30, 60, or 100 fold for use in your kingdom. It's the name of Jesus we pray. Amen. You know, we live in a world where it seems like we're in one battle after the next. Uh, as soon as you get out of one trouble, you're in to another. And sometimes it seems as if our life is just a series of battles, one after the other. But you know, if you were going to fight against a giant, what would you bring with you? Think about it. A little giant, a huge man, if you had to fight him, what would you bring to the fight? Well, our scripture today comes from the first, uh, the first uh, book of Samuel, chapter 17. You might know the story. It's a story about David and Goliath. So Samuel, 1 Samuel, chapter 17, verses 38 through 40. 1 Samuel, chapter 17, verses 38 through 40. Hear the word of God. Saul clothed David with his armor. He put a bronze helmet on his head and clothed him with a coat of mail. David wrapped Saul's sword over the armor, and he tried to walk in vain, but he was not used to them. Then David said to Saul, I cannot walk in them, for I am not used to them. So David removed them. Then he took his staff in his hand, and he chose five smooth stones from the stream and put them in his shepherd's bag, in the pouch, and his sling was in his hand, and he drew near to the Philistine. This is the word of God for us, the people of God. Thanks be to God. So they wanted to give him armor. They wanted to give him a sword. But David said, no, all I need are five smooth stones. So if you would come and play just a little while with me on the topic, five smooth stones. Won't you pray with me? Oh, Lord, our God, it seems that sometimes every day is a struggle and every day is a battle. But, Lord, we need you. So, Lord, we need you in this moment. Speak to our hearts. Be there with us, oh, Lord. We come before you because we know that we cannot do this alone. So open our ears, open our minds. Open our hearts and our souls that we might hear a word from you, Lord. Now minimize our future and our Redeemer. The children of God said, Amen, Amen, and Amen. Five smooth stones. I imagine it was a stone similar to this that David used that day. But I thought it was interesting that all he wanted was five stones. Now, I'm sure you know the story of David and Goliath. It's a story that's been told probably since uh, you were in, in Sunday school. So let me ask you a question. Is there anybody who does not know the story about David and Goliath? If you don't know the story, raise your hand. Okay, I don't see anybody's hands raised, but let me just go back through the story with for you just real quickly to help you to pick it to point out some of the different things that we see there. So it's interesting that David had been anointed king the, the chapter before, the 16th chapter, he was anointed king of Israel. And now in the 17th chapter, he has gone back to being the shepherd boy. He's gone back to, to being, uh, uh, working with the sheep and taking care of them. While meanwhile, there's a war raging between Israel and the Philistines. 
and they come to this valley and there's mountains on one side and a mountain on the other side and the, Israel, the troops for Israel on one side and the troops for the Philistines on the other side. And what they would do is they would come and battle in the middle. But at this time, uh, there was one big, huge Philistine. And he would come down every day and he would challenge the people of Israel. He'd come down and say, well, no sense in a lot of people dying. I'm here. You send me out your best warrior and let's go at it. And whoever wins, then the others will be subjected to them. So if I win and I defeat your champion, then you will be subjected to us. And if your champion defeats me, then we will be subjected to you. That might sound like a good idea, but my Bible tells me that Goliath was six cubits and a span. Now, six cubits is already nine feet tall. That's right, nine feet tall, and the span adds on to that. And how he was so big that it says that his coat of armor weighed 5,000 shekels, his coat of mail. That's like a, a, a chain link fence that they put around him so that if the sword hits him, it will hit the chain but not hit him. It might cause a bruise, but it won't cut him. 5,000 shekels. You know how much that is? About 125 pounds. Can you imagine walking around with a coat that has 125 pounds in it all day long and then be expected to fight? But not only did he have that, he also had a, a, a javelin, a bronze that he had on his, on his back between his shoulder blades. And he had bronze plates on the front of his leg so he wouldn't get cut there. And he had a big spear, and it says the spear looked like a weaver's loom. And, and a weaver's loom is usually a big thing like that, so you can pull down on it. It's not small, but it's big. And it says that the head of his spear weighed about 15 pounds. This is a big huge, intimidating figure. But no one wants to fight him. You might think that Saul would want to fight him because Saul was the king and Saul was also a big guy. As a matter of fact, when uh, Saul, before he was anointed king, when the, the family the tribes came before Samuel so he could anoint their king, it said when Saul's family came that he stood head and shoulders above everybody else. But Saul didn't want any part of, of, of Goliath. So David is back with his father working the sheep, and the father has three sons. The oldest three sons are in war with Saul. So he says, go see about my sons and take some cheese and take some grain with you and take care of the commander. You see, if you took care of the commander, then your boys would not be moved to the front of the line. you get moved to the back of the line, so you might not be in the princess of fighting. Yeah, they were bribing folks even back then. It's in the Bible. Read it. So David carries the, the, the goods and he leaves them with the person who, can, who cares for all of that. And he starts talking to his brother and then Goliath comes out. And Goliath makes this claim, send out your warrior and I'll beat him. I'll kick his tail. But nobody wants to go. And someone nearby says, well, you know that uh, the king has said, if someone, well, I'll read it to you. It says that the king will greatly enrich the man who kills him and will give him his daughter and make his family free in Israel. David said, hmm, the king's favor, the king's daughter, and my family would be living free in Israel, which means they would not have to pay taxes to the king anymore. So he wanted to make sure that this guy wasn't just blowing smoke. So he turned to somebody else and said, so what would happen if uh, somebody kills this Goliath? He said the same thing, three things. King's favor, king's daughter, no more taxes. His older brother heard him talking, asking these questions. And he says, what are you doing up here? You little runt. Why are you trying to be up here? You just want to see the war. You shouldn't even be up here. David's like, well, wait a second. I'm just asking a question. But did that stop David? No. His brother knew what he was talking about. David wanted to get ahead. And when David heard about king's favor, king's daughter, and no taxes, David was thinking strongly about it. So he asked somebody else. He didn't stop because his brother had chastised him. He asked somebody else what would happen, and the same three things came up. Meanwhile, Saul heard that somebody was inquisitive and asking about this, this fighting this giant, and said, well, maybe this could be our Savior. So he called for David to come and, 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 and see who David was. And when David came, he said, you're nothing but a little boy. You're not able to school against him. This Philistine, uh, you cannot go against this Philistine to fight with him. 
for you are just a boy, and he has been a warrior since his youth. Everybody thought David was crazy. He couldn't do it. But David responded with this. He said, your servant has killed both lion and bears, and this uncircumcised Philistine shall be like one of them, since he has defied the armies of the living God. So Saul said, okay, well, try my armor on him. If you're going to fight him, you need to get prepared. So he tried to put the armor on him, but that armor did not fit. And it was, it was cumbersome for David. He wasn't used to it. So instead, he took his staff. Went to the wadi, to the river, to the stream, and got five smooth stones. But you need to understand that this wasn't war like we see today. Today we go and we sit on one side, they sit on the other side, and we shoot at them, and they shoot at us, and we throw bombs at them, and they throw bombs at us, and planes fly overhead and drop more bombs and do more shooting. No, this is hand-to-hand -hand combat, and it was barbaric combat. You see, at the end, when David does defeat uh, Goliath, he actually cuts off his head. But he doesn't stop there after cutting off his head. He carries the head around with him for a while. As a matter of fact, he carries the head to Jerusalem. And then when Saul calls for him, he brings the head to Saul, walking around carrying somebody's cut off head. We're talking about barbaric war. And David carried five smooth stones. We all have giants in our lives. Right now, our world is facing the giants of COVID and racism. What's your giant? Is it drugs? Alcohol? Anger? Fear? Worry? Hatred? Jealousy? Envy? What's your giant? And how do you fight it? Well, Paul says that we should put on the armor of God if we're going to fight anything. He says, stand therefore, this is Ephesians, the sixth chapter, verse 14. Stand therefore and fasten the belt of truth around your waist and put on the breastplate of righteousness as for shoes put on your feet, whatever will make you ready to proclaim the gospel of peace. With all of these, take the shield of faith, with which you will be able to quench all the flaming arrows of the evil one. Take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the Spirit, which is the word of God. So these are some spiritual weapons, spiritual armor that we all need to wear and carry along with us all the time. I was listening to uh, another Sunday school this morning, and uh, the man says that, uh, he went and told somebody, yeah, well, I put on God's armor this, this morning, and uh, the, the lady responded to him, well, why did you take it off last night? We need to keep this armor on 24-7 because yes. the enemy is yes. always trying to attack us. Amen. But you see, David already had those, but he went to war. He carried five stones, not the armor of Saul. Why? Because they were not his weapons. They were not his weapons. You have to use your weapons. What's going to make you successful in fighting the enemy? So I'm going to give you my five stones. Now you need to get your own, and you need to know what your five stones are. Because everybody has different needs and different ways they need to fight. You will notice what's missing from my five stones. You won't find prayer there. You won't find meditation there. You won't find fasting in my five stones. Does it mean that they are not needed? Does it mean that I don't do them? No, I fast on a regular basis about once a month. I, I meditate every morning and I pray without ceasing. But you see, I'm already prayed up. So that's not a stone that I need to carry with me in battle. That's already taken care of. But here are the five stones that I carry with me into battle. The first stone is faith. Faith. I need to have faith. It's interesting yes. when Jesus showed himself to his disciples in the upper room, he came in and said, peace with you. What he's saying is, have faith, I'm here. Have faith, I'm here. How many times did, did the disciples worry and he would chastise them and say, oh, ye of little faith. 
But those who had faith, he, he complimented them. You remember the Canaanite woman who came to Jesus and he told her that I didn't come for you. I came for the children of Israel. It's not right to give uh, the food to the dogs. And she says, well, even the dogs eat the crumbs from under the table. And Jesus says, great is your faith. The centurion who, who wanted Jesus to come heal his servant, and Jesus says, I'll come. And the, and the centurion says, no, you don't have to come. Just speak the word. Because I command soldiers, and I say, go here, go there, and they do it. Jesus says, I haven't found faith like you in all of Israel. Or, or in Mark, the second chapter, when four friends bring another friend who is lame to Jesus and they can't get in because of the crowd, so they tear a hole in the roof and then let him down through the roof. Jesus says, because of your faith, I will heal him. We all need faith. David had faith. David truly had faith. Want to see what David's faith was like? All we have to do is look at that 37th verse. At that 37th verse uh, of 1 Samuel 17. I lost my place. Here we go. David says, The Lord who has spoke, who has saved me from the paw of the lion and from the paw of the bear will save me from the hand of this Philistine. That's faith. He said, I've already had some tough battles in my life, and because I've had some tough battles in my life, as I go forward, I have faith knowing that God will take care of me even then. So my first stone is faith. My second stone is hope. Hope. What are you hoping for? You see, we all need to have some expectations in life. If you don't have any expectations in life, it seems like you're just waiting for the grave. What are your expectations? What are your expectations for your kids? What are your expectations for your grandkids? Where are you expecting God to move in your life? I think too many people are just sitting back waiting to see what's going to happen next. And that's why, that's where, that's no way to live this life. Paul said the three things are left, faith, hope, and love. And the greatest of these are love. We need to have faith and we need to have hope. You see, if you're only hoping for what you know you can do, for what you can see with your own eyes, with the resources that you already have, that's not faith and that's not hope. You can already do that. We need to hope for something that, that's so big that it will need God for us to succeed. What are you hoping for? What are you expecting for from God? So we have faith. We have hope. And then we have obedience. Obedience. Obedience means giving your will to God's will. Giving your will to God's will. You know, even Jesus says, or not that night in Gethsemane. Not my will, but thy will be done. Philippians 2, Paul tells us that Jesus uh, was obedient, even obedient to death on the cross. And the writer of Hebrews puts it this way in Hebrews 5 and verse 6 and 7. He says, although he was a son, he learned obedience through what he suffered. And having been made perfect, he became the source of eternal salvation for all who obey him. So Jesus learned obedience by going through the things that he had to go through. You see, the things we have to go through are not to tear us down, but they're actually to build us up. It's to teach us faith. It's to teach us hope. To teach us obedience. And Jesus learned that obedience while he was here. And now he lived that perfected life. Now salvation comes through him. And so now we are to obey him. So that's faith. That's hope. Obedience. The fourth stone is generosity. Generosity. We need to be generous with our time, our talents, and our tithes. Generosity is the giving of self. And we give ourselves in so many different ways, but one of the ways we give ourselves is through service. You know, we have all these things going on at the church, and I see a lot of the same faces all the time. You know, you can come and participate too. We have food giveaways on Tuesdays from 1 to 3, and you can come at 12 o'clock and help us set up. 
or the food giveaways on Thursdays from, from 1 to 3. And you can come at 12, excuse me, at, at 11 o'clock to help us set up for that. We need participation. We need people to help get the job done. We actually have people in the neighborhood who come every Thursday to help participate as we give away these foods. Our talents. We all are blessed with spiritual gifts. We all are blessed with physical gifts and mental gifts. Are you using them for the kingdom? Yes, you can make money with them. God wants you to use them for yourself. But how are you using them for God's kingdom? And then the tithe. God says, I'm going to give it to you. And I'm going to see if you trust me enough to give me 10% back. Just live on 90%. Give me 10%. And says, and see if I won't open up the windows of heaven and pour you out a blessing that you won't have room to receive. You know, I know sometimes you don't have enough funds to give 10%. But someone said something that stood with me a long time ago. He says, when in need, sow a seed. When in need, sow a seed. We need to bless God with something that we have and watch God bless us back. So faith, hope, obedience, generosity, and my fifth stone is gratitude. Gratitude. As Christians, we are supposed to be thankful. As a matter of fact, the, the, book, the, the, the Bible tells us that we are to be thankful at all times. In all things, give thanks because that's the will of God for you in Christ Jesus. We need to give thanks, and we need to give praise in the midst of your struggles. I was talking to uh, someone who's uh, in their 80s this past week, and he was telling me that he, his quality of life was not much. And I listened to his complaint, and I responded, yes, I can understand because of the life that you have lived and the places that you've been able to go, and the physical uh, characteristics that you've been able to, to have, that in your current condition, you can get a little depressed, and you can feel like it's not a quality of life. But you're still walking around, even if you're walking on a walker. There are many people who can't walk around, who have to be in a wheelchair. There are many people who have a foot or a leg amputated and can't get around. There are many people who have to take insulin uh, injections yes. every day. There, there's so many things that other people have to go through. But when we look at our eyes and we say, it's not what it used to be, but it's still a good life. We still have so much to be thankful for. Is the glass half empty or is the glass half full? We have to look and count our blessings every day because God woke me up this morning. That's enough reason for me to be thankful. He clothed me yes, in my right yes, mind. That's yes, reason to be thankful. Yes. Had, I slept in a bed last night. That's reason to be thankful. Amen. I had air conditioning. Downstairs, upstairs is out. But downstairs, I got air conditioning. I can <laughs> praise him for that. Even though it's hot upstairs, it's cool downstairs. We have to find ways to just thank God for being God. And we need to praise him in the midst of our struggle. Don't wait till you get to the other side to start praying. Praising God, praise Him as you go through because gratitude opens up the blessing yes, of God. Yes. When your God sees that you're down and, and Satan's put a heavy load on you, but you're still giving God praise, then that's when God pours out the blessing yes. even more to say, this is my child who believes in me. This is my child who's still holding on strong. We yes. need to praise God in the midst of our circumstances. Yes, yes. So those are my five stones. What are your five stones? My five stones are real easy. Faith, hope, obedience, gratitude, and generosity. David had five stones, but he only used one. He used one to stop the giant. And you know, really, all we need is one stone. It's called the cornerstone. Yes. The stone that the builders rejected has become the cornerstone. And that cornerstone is Jesus the Christ. You see, as long as Jesus is on your side, you have nothing to worry about. Even if you go through troubles here, there is another side that you will that you'll get to where you don't have to worry about this no yes. more. Where there is no more crying, where there is no more suffering, where there is no more pain. But you know what Jesus says? He says, you don't have to wait till you get the other side because I came here to give you an abundant life now. Now that doesn't yes. mean a lot of money. It doesn't mean that. It means peace of mind. It means joy. It means happiness. Yes. It means love. That's what Jesus offers. 
offers. And if you take up Jesus on this offer, I tell you, that's the only stone you need to fight your enemies, to fight your battles. Because the battle is not yours. The battle is the Lord's. Yes. Thank you, God. Thank you, God. Five smooth stones. Get your stones. Hold on to them. Because we are in war. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the amen. Holy Spirit. Amen, amen, and amen. If you have not accepted Jesus as your Lord and Savior, there's no better time than now. All you have to do is recite this little prayer with me. Lord Jesus, I'm a sinner. Come into my life. I make you Lord of me. Yes, yes. You pray that simple prayer. We believe that you have been saved, that you are in the body of faith. Find you a good church home, and you can find your church home with us. If you prayed this prayer, send me an email to prayer at epfmumc.org. That's prayer at epfmumc.org. We want to welcome you into the body of faith where you can be built up in your faith, where you can be welcome into the fellowship, where you have people that care about you, where you will have a Christian family. Now, as we prepare to leave, we don't want to leave without giving you the opportunity to be a part of this ministry. You can do this in five ways. You can uh, go online to epfmumc.org. That's epfmumc.org. And you can get, hit the give button. You can give through the Give Plus app on your phone. You can text the amount you want to give to 404-567-5052. That's 404-567-5052. Or you can mail a check to the church at 2651. That's 2651 Church Street, East Point, Georgia, 30344. Or you can drive by the church and put it your check or cash into our mail slot. Thank you for worshiping with us today. We hope to see you back here next week, same back time, same back station, because our God is good. Have a wonderful, blessed day, and know that God loves you.